So after you hear me read this scripture, these scriptures, know that I did not choose them for today. The lectionary text told me when I opened up my UCC calendar, it said, here are the texts for the day. And by the way, um, Darren said, oh, it's Stewardship Sunday, so take these texts and turn them into a stewardship message. And um, I said, okay, uh, sure, that's fine. Why I say that uh, I did not choose these, I think they were chosen for us by the lectionary people, but I, they're harsh texts to hear. And um, the prophet Amos, who I will read first, uh, he told it like it was, and the people around him uh, were not doing God's work, and uh, his job, he felt, was to get them on the straight and narrow. You with me? Okay. So, The text looks at uh, the ways in which the people around him were uh, living out their faith. And it was through grand gestures of rituals and worship and music and probably concerts and just lots of things. And he was saying that's not what it's really about. I mean, it's not just about that, but it's also about the way in which we live out our faith in actions of justice and righteousness. So, I read this text. Amos chapter 5, verse 18 through 24. Woe to you who despise the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into a house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake told you this, these aren't easy texts. <laughs> it is not, the day, is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your festivals and take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. The, and the offerings of well-being of your fatted calves, fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And again, Jesus isn't too happy on this day either. Just a warning. <laughs> Jesus is uh, sharing some parables with the disciples. Uh, there's a series of four parables, and it's known as uh, what's considered the other Sermon on the Mount. The first one being, blessed are the peacemakers and all that that you've read probably a number of times here. And uh, the idea is the first set of uh, sermons on the Mount were directed at the disciples and the people that were gathered around Jesus. These uh, stories, these parables, were directed toward the disciples at the Mount of Olives. And where were they when they were at the Mount of Olives? What's that? Jerusalem. Right, right. And it was at the end of Jesus' life. So this was; these were uh, verses... The first Sermon on the Mount, where it's the beginning of Jesus's, this is the end, and he's talking to the disciples. And so he is uh, very bold in his uh, parables. Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten young women, or bridesmaids, took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise one took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a loud shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. 
Then all those young women, the young bridesmaids, got up, trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourself. And while they went, while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the young brides, bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know neither the day nor the hour. If I was writing that, I would have want to say to Jesus, say, just let the wise ones give one some to the foolish. Let's share. Let's have this be a parable about sharing, right? But it wasn't. It was about um, Jesus making the point of who is prepared, who is ready. So I know you all like music, right? Yeah. So I'm going to teach you a little ditty. You going to sing with me? <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it's just a song that I used to sing at summer camp, and I'm just going to teach you the, the, the first verse and the chorus because you'll understand why. So the words are, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. You know this one. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. And then I say burning, burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. So let's sing that. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, burning, burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Okay, so the chorus is, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. All right? Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. All right, let's take it from the top. One, two, three. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning, 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 keep me burning till the break of day. What are you gonna do? Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Thank you very much. All right, the title of the sermon is Give Me Oil in My Lamp. There you go. It's interesting to me that the lectionary readings for today are very much like the ones you're gonna be reading shortly in Advent, where uh, Advent readings are, will be coming two weeks from now, because many of the Advent readings that we read during that time are what we call apocalyptic. They are, uh, scriptures that point to the time when it was believed that God was going to return or Jesus was going to come back. And so that's why during Advent you hear a lot of messages about waiting, about how do we wait, looking for how God is uh, coming back during this time. And those are called apocalyptic uh, passages. And our Old Testament reading, Amos, is declaring that the people of Israel need to get their priorities straight because they think that the coming of the Lord is going to be great. But Amos is saying, no, it's really not going to be great. It's not going to be a time of light. It's going to be a time of darkness because when the day of the Lord comes, just so you know, Amos says, God is not happy. And Jesus, in this other Sermon on the Mount, on the Mount of Olives, toward the end of his life, is 
teaching once again in parables. Not like the first Sermon on the Mount when he preached to thousands and thousands of crowds of men, women, and children. Now his audience in these final days were his disciples and those few men and women, perhaps children, closest to him at this very end. Our lesson today is the second of four parables that Jesus shared in order to teach his followers that they need to get their priorities straight. For a time would be coming, because even Jesus thought the time would be coming, that he would be coming back and it would be imperative for people to be ready. I used to have a bumper sticker that says, Jesus is coming, look busy. <laughs> yep, truth, yep. And in these texts, in these different parables that Jesus outlined, he gave some important messages. They needed to be busy taking care of the tasks in front of them. They needed to be busy so they weren't caught unprepared, like the uh, bridesmaids that had uh, no oil in their lamp. They needed to be uh, investing their talents wisely. The next uh, parable is about the, the person who give, well, I'll give you one talent, two talents, three talents, five talents, one buries it, one's invested. And, and, and the, 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 uh, the parable is really about um, how do we invest the talents? How do we give the talents, share the talents that we have wisely? And then it finishes up with a parable that you know, I'm sure, about the sheep and the goats. So these are four, so tell me about the sheep and the goats. Separated them and, and the sheep were who? Don't be shy. <laughs> right, right, the sheep were the ones, that, okay, the sheep on the right, the goats on the left, and the sheep were the ones who uh, took care of people, who fed the naked. No, well, they probably did. <laughs> Yep. Thank you. Fed the hungry. <laughs> Clothed the naked. Visited the sick. Visited those in prison. Those were the sheep. And, and, and the goats were the ones who didn't do that. And, and Jesus says, whatever you do to the least of these, you do for me. So again, it was this stark contrast, much like Amos, right? Jesus is saying in this final paragraph, um, you know, what's most important is how you treat the least of these. So they were to be busy being sheep. So the title of this sermon uh, is Give Me Oil in My Lamp, but that's because he needed the title a while ago. So what I would say that this sermon is really, uh, I would name it Justice and Light. Because on the surface, it would seem that Amos is saying, God despises your worship and your rituals. But I think the deeper message behind the total uh, work of Amos is this, that yes, obviously, worship of God is important. But worship is empty if it is not partnered with works of justice and righteousness. Does that make sense? Anybody know James, the book of James? Yep, those of you, I know you all study the Bible here, that's what Darren tells me. He says you're biblical scholars, but I'm wondering right now, actually. <laughs> James, James. So James talks a lot about faith and works. The idea of that there needs to be a partnership between um, how we express our faith and, and that which we do for love and justice. For Amos, what was more important was how they lived their faith, expressed in their worship, in their daily lives. What was more important for God was that justice rolled down like water and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Feel for Amos, it was a both and. Jesus' message to the disciples was literally stay awake. Stay ready, stay busy, stay prepared, 
Have enough oil in your lamps because you never know if the bridegroom might be delayed. Justice and light. And so on this day, when you dedicate your tithes and your pledges for this year, what might these scriptures have to offer you in your thinking, visioning, and planning for the ministry year ahead? Now, this is where if I wanted to, I could just stop and have them finish the sermon, right? All right, I won't. One message might be, and if it sounds true, I need an amen, because I just need to know that you're away. I drove all this way here. <laughs> and I just need to know that you people who drove around the corner are actually awakened with me. So let's practice. Amen. amen. Okay. One message might be that simply Jesus is urging the church to keep their lamps filled and keep some extra oil around. Because, well, the bridegroom might be late, and you might find that you need it. And frankly, this is what the message of being a good steward is, to be prepared and to use your resources wisely. The message might be that filled lamps are not just for worship and fellowship hour, but also for works of love and care, outreach and service, justice and mercy, and being sheep, feeding the hungry, feeding the naked, I mean clothing the naked, <laughs> visiting the sick and those in prison. So much of what you already do as you let your light shine in this community and beyond. Do I hear an amen? amen? All right. Today I want to suggest that your tithes and offerings are like the oil in the parable. Lamps need oil to burn light, to make and create light. Churches need the energy of your time, your talents, your treasures, your tithes, your pledges, to continue to bring light into the darkest places in this community and world. Amen. 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 Friends, there are churches in my region who are struggling. Like the bridesmaids, perhaps they were unprepared in times of struggle times of challenge. Maybe they fell asleep and their lamps went out and it was too late to get any more oil to get to the wedding party. Churches struggling who don't have the resources, the energy, the oil to keep their ministry going. I don't think I need to tell you that all churches are struggling still from the impact of COVID on their community, on their finances, on their loss of members. Some will not make it through this challenging time and will close their churches and retire their ministry presence in this community. And it is sad when a church runs out of oil. I believe all churches need to heed the message and ask themselves the questions. Are we really awake? Are we really awake? Are we ready? Are we busy with God's work? Are our lamps filled with more left over? So what about you, the people of God here in Orleans? Talk to Darren and I heard all your secrets. <laughs> but I heard, friends, that you have a storehouse of oil. You have a storehouse of oil that you have been gifted and you have been empowered 
to steward that oil in such a way that it brings light into the world. Do you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. I understand that through your local grants, to lo your annual grants to local missions, outreach programs, service organizations, and other helping hands, you are doing God's work in the community. And that's a really wonderful thing. Because some people think they should just hoard their oil. Did I get a little amen into that there? <laughs> that's the mission committee, right? OK, there you go. And friends, I understand that your oil lamps shine brightly in the community as you work and support Emmaus House your work with the Interfaith Justice Committee, your work on climate justice, your partnership with the Jewish and Pentecostal faith communities that share this beautiful building. Your light shines in your commitments to be an open and affirming congregation, a green church, and in working toward being a wise community. Your light shines in the extravagant welcome that you offer. Do I hear an amen? amen. All right. So if you haven't been paying attention yet, this is where it's important to pay attention. This is Stewardship Sunday. And we celebrate the storehouses of oil. I don't know where you store your oil. I was going to say, I store my oil at Rockland Trust. Um, uh, we celebrate the storehouses of oil that allow you to share so generously with others. And, 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 I believe our message from Jesus today is not just about the collective work that you do as a church, this community of light, and more about the individuals in it. Jesus calls each of us to be ready, to be prepared. Jesus' parables ask the question, how are we waiting? Are we awake? Are we keeping watch? Are we tending the lost and the least? Are we taking responsibility to keep our lamps full and then some? And the church's lamps full and lit so that individually, and collectively, you can continue to be the light that Jesus calls you to be. Do I need to repeat that? Do you get that? Yes. It is about the collective work of the church, but stewardship is really about your own hearts and what it is that you bring to this. And friends, we know that some bridesmaids fell asleep, some ran out of oil, some churches' coffers are empty and sadly will close. And some, those awake, those checking the oil tanks, those busy with God's work, those stewarding the resources that you have been blessed with, those prepared will be justice and light in the world for God. May it be so. May it be so. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Hallelujah. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Everybody, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give yourselves an amen and a round of applause. Thank you.